go to our atom indirect uh, effect now. And we can see that this looks a lot different now. So, uh, yeah, uh, we have a number of samples, which I think the reason why this is uh, looking modeled is that uh, sample is so low. So, set to 64. And uh, what this uh, effect is doing is uh, it's creating some indirect lighting. Uh, our uh, global illumination. And so hopefully we'll be able to see this effect a little better in a moment. Okay, so it's some better. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's now taking uh, significantly longer to render, but uh, there isn't as much of this model effect as we were getting before. Uh, still, I think we could uh, push this up even, even higher since uh, for a GI render. Uh, this is uh, still not too bad. Uh, local axis, yeah. Just want to sort of bring this out from the wall. Yeah. So let's continue on. Find out where I left my effect. Okay, so placed on the wall here. Uh, if I have it. I, th I think I'm just going to leave it on the wall. I don't really know uh, what happens if I put this on every object, every layer, although I suppose it would be a good idea. Not sure on that one. Uh, so, 
what we're seeing here is that there's is some more uh, more light uh, bouncing off surfaces and of course we can control this with our bounces again this is going to take more time to render uh, but we have uh, color uh, bleeding from this wall onto the floor not so much the floor onto the wall uh, that's either because of where our light is positioned or because there's no indirect Um, there's no indirect material on this floor. Okay. And uh, the other thing we're seeing is that uh, the ambient light is affected. So where before we didn't have any ambient light uh, we're seeing uh, light bounce off the floor and onto the wall uh, and getting an ambient light effect uh, where there's red shadows or green shadows in the case of the floor and yeah and then of course we can change the intensity of this Okay, now we can see that there is less of an indirect illumination effect. And uh, the other thing I want to uh, mention is that uh, the rendering t time of Atomcraft is relatively good. It's still a lot uh, slower than uh, some solutions, uh, such as ray traced 3D on the GPU, or especially the uh, Element 3D uh, plugin with its OpenGL rendering. And that's because. Atomcraft uh, relies entirely on uh, CPU computation and it, uh, it uh, renders uh, in the same way as uh, like mental way would. Uh, it, it does not uh, render with any kind of uh, uh, graphics card uh, computing it's um, uh, an offline renderer uh, which is what uh, Lester Banks we call it um, it's meant to give a full high quality render uh, than uh, what what would be if it's rendering on the uh, GPU uh, or some other kind of preview rendering? Uh, so while it's uh, slower, it's also a better render, and at the same time, it's uh, not really meant for real-time display. So, every time you update this, it has to 
completely re-render the image. So, uh, since we are getting into uh, a lot slower uh, rendering, what I'm going to do now is go into Window Atom Craft and bring up our Atom Render window. Okay. And uh, gives us values for shading. Just set one. I'll leave it right there. And anti aliasing. We can turn that down. So if we wanted to, uh, we could just turn down these values to give us a faster rendering until we want to uh, give us a full render. And yeah. Okay, I'm going to pause this again. Okay, so uh, we've turned down our samples and uh, we get a lot uh, le a lot more aliasing and I'm not sure about the shading quality uh, but that should render uh, faster than what we were getting before and well, especially what I want to look at is this resolution and draft 3D degradation. So if you've used uh, draft 3D before, uh, like right here, uh, this you'll know that uh, draft 3D runs uh, faster than uh, than otherwise. So this can be a way to uh, speed up your rendering if After Effects is going slowly. So if I switch this to 100, I think that will give us a faster time. Pause this again. Okay, so yeah, this uh, rendered much, much faster. Try 40. Okay, so there we get something kind of uh, uh, kind of a compromise between speed and quality. And I think what this does um, uh, this turns off updating. So, okay, never mind. That's not what it does.
Okay, and going on to motion blur. Atomcraft has some uh, very nice uh, motion blur features. Uh, you can calculate full 3D ray traced motion blur and uh, we can set it to full or to motion vectors. And while I don't have any uh, animation or movement to demonstrate this, uh, the full will be the uh, final render with motion blur and this motion vectors will be uh, just the uh, vectored movement for compositing later. Uh, just our ray tracing settings and couldn't say what uh, like this shutter efficiency does. So, yeah. Uh, this is the uh, the number of uh, rays that are shot from the camera and bounce off objects. Uh, probably useful for things like